Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. So, um, I think it's time for us to have a relatively realistic conversation as to exactly how high Bitcoin's price could go in the event of the perfect storm actually happening. If you've been following the channel over the course of the last month or so, I even say two months, end of summer, uh, the anticipation for the Bitcoin having is real. Like it's very intense. It's usually always this way. If this is your first having, welcome. I know it's been a bit intense the last two years, but this is how it usually unfolds. Uh, prices go up. New people get into the market. Prices go down. People accumulate. And then we are currently roughly around here waiting for this like mega surge in the market. Uh, along with this, of course, comes a, a gigantic number of price predictions, many of which we've been seeing over the course of this year in anticipation of the Bitcoin halving. When you mix in everything that's been happening between the halving, between the Bitcoin ETF situation, between the massive accumulation, and just the also anticipation of prices moving up, this puts us into a very weird space that we've actually never been in before. Much of the history of Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency space was relatively speculative. That is not to say that it is no longer speculative. Every asset class is speculative. You buy a home, you buy a house, you buy a loft because you are speculating that someone's going to want to live there. You speculate that the value of land and property will continue to rise. You do it with comic books, you do it with art. It's just a matter of the market that you're actually in. When it comes to the last two or three years, as, as far as this uh, uh, will it or will not it, is that, is that a saying? Uh, we've s seen, at least on this channel and the other channel and the cryptocurrency space, I think a lot of people outside the crypto bubble are still not really with it. They just aren't there. Uh, we've seen this hyper solidification of Bitcoin as an asset class. We got that years ago from the hundreds of banks who announced in the United States roughly around 2020. We know what happened. Things are a little slow still. Back in 2020, that they wanted to be able to legally hold in custody and, and sell and offer Bitcoin to their clients. We heard that from hundreds of banks across Europe as well, many places around Asia. We know that there are multiple countries, we've gone over this before, who are mining Bitcoin, who own Bitcoin, who are adding it to their treasury, even other places. I believe it's like Sao Paulo as well in Brazil. So it doesn't even have to be the entire country, but there are certain cities who are also buying up Bitcoin for their reserves. There's a very interesting um, article that was put out by this company called Blockware Solutions, which we're going to lightly go over. And this is what I mean when I talk about actual realistic. Um, as of now, the price predictions that we're currently floating around for Bitcoin, 2024, 2025, they're usually around, you've seen the 125,000, 200,000. Some of them talk about a quarter of a million, but that's like very special circumstances. People talk about interest rates rising, interest rates stopping to rise, money being pushed back into the stock market from the Fed, that money overflows into the cryptocurrency market. Blockware Solutions has that take on it, but also a little, little, little bit different. Um, there was recently something, I believe one of the heads from, it's not, is it Blockstream? It sounds like a transformer. The people who, um, I can't remember their, what, what they're called, the, the people who kind of like uh, deal with Bitcoin's code. I think it's Blockstream. I cannot, yeah, anyway, anyway, the point is, and one of the heads of Blockstream, I'm just going with that name at this point, uh, recently said that he's actually perplexed at how market makers, wink, have been able to keep Bitcoin's price below 100,000. He said just based on the metrics alone, Bitcoin should logically be over $100,000 per coin. That's the massive accumulation. That's the other halvings that we've had before. That's the knowledge that banks and institutions are actively in this space. Another metric that a lot of people forget, maybe don't want to know about because it doesn't seem as important to them, is the fact that Bitcoin hasn't broken. 
Bitcoin's a very slow blockchain. We know that three transactions per second, but it's still chugging along. Every 24 hours that Bitcoin stays around is another 24 hours that the blockchain becomes stronger because it becomes further immutable in, in, in that if someone were to even try to copy Bitcoin, you'd have to copy years over a decade of all these transactions. And there's just so many things that tie into that. For those of you who also missed it as well, you can Google this one. Bitcoin processes per year trillions, trillions with a T, trillions of dollars worth of value just on the Bitcoin blockchain alone. There are mega banks that don't even do that. There are countries, there are countries that don't reach trillions of dollars worth of transactions nonetheless on a blockchain i was going to try and like make a, a figure of a blockchain with my fingers i don't know how i'm supposed to actually do that blockware solutions has thrown all of that together and they've kind of come up with an idea they think that the demand will be so explosive for bitcoin that the market can't accurately price it in yet they said that people are also forgetting about the people who mine bitcoin Historically, if you are mining Bitcoin, what ends up happening is, is that you have a light bill. You have electricity that you have to pay. So typically we get the amount that it costs to mine a Bitcoin. If you see that it's profitable, profitable, there we go. You begin your mining thing that you're going to do. And therefore, you know that you're making a profit every time that you mine a Bitcoin. However, at the end of the month, at the end of the year, you have to pay your electricity bill. So you sell off some of your Bitcoin to pay for the electricity costs. We usually see that over the course of the last couple of halvings, this, this selling tends to not be as intense because Bitcoin's price continues to rise. That is to say, if you see that it costs uh, 10,000 to mine a Bitcoin and your electricity costs are 8,000, you're making 2,000 profit. However, at the end of the month, you have to sell off a huge amount of Bitcoin. If your electricity costs, most people who are mining, like huge mining operations, they tend to go to countries that have a relatively stable electricity situation, hydroelectricity, lava electricity, which is also a thing, and all these other things like that. So if you see that it's still 8,000 one year, but Bitcoin's price goes up to 23,000, well, therefore you have a lot less Bitcoin to sell to keep the lights on. And we see this as well when the halving actually happens, that Bitcoin's price tends to skyrocket up because the demand even if it remained the same, would still cause Bitcoin's price to roughly double because of the halving that got cut in half. And therefore, if it's even that remains the same, Bitcoin's price tends to always double during the actual halving, at least a double, and therefore less selling pressure from people who are also mining the coins. They said, we've seen less selling pressure over the course of this year. We've seen a lot of gobbling up of Bitcoin in anticipation of a, of a crazy price move. The general idea being, if you're selling your Bitcoin, this is the idea. This is not financial advice. This is the idea is that if you're selling your Bitcoin, you're a little crazy because we all are anticipating Bitcoin going over 100,000. So who would be selling their Bitcoin for 30 something K knowing that is going to triple somewhere around in price? The interesting part is that they probably have the most realistic price prediction for Bitcoin during the having, during the ETF madness, during everything that we've seen. For those of you who've been missing these videos, shame on you. I, I, I make videos all the time. Uh, there's a video that came out from here a couple of days ago. I think as far as like all the Bitcoin in the world, 92% of 92, 92% of all the Bitcoin is now being held by like basically wealthy people or people fortunate enough to own an entire Bitcoin. There's barely any Bitcoin left. We've been going over that for a very long time. Thus, the perplexity, there we go, of being like, how, do, how are they managing to keep Bitcoin this low in price when there's barely anything actually left? Blockware Solutions believes that Bitcoin, due to the having shock, due to the ETF shock, due to the countries who are buying and mining and holding and accumulating all of this Bitcoin, the whales, the normal people, the frenzy that typically takes place over the course of a halving. They think that Bitcoin is probably going to rise by roughly around 1,250%. If this number sounds crazy, uh, this must be your first time here because we usually always end up doing really crazy numbers like this. They're anticipating a $400,000 Bitcoin 
based off of everything that we were currently talking about. They said that they're expecting some type of unprecedented uh, price surge simply because there isn't actually a lot of Bitcoin left on crypto exchanges and within the market. And a lot of people who we've seen called long-term holders, it appears as though they have no intention of selling their Bitcoin and or using their Bitcoin or relinquishing their Bitcoin anytime soon. This is the theory at least. One of my theories as well is that a lot of people who are holding Bitcoin kind of really want it to go high to like half a million to a million dollars per coin before they start using it to buy homes and cars and other things like that. Nobody wants to essentially be the pizza guy. Um, yeah, I think that was basically it. They have a little quote right here. They and this is okay. Here's here's the here's the here's the other kicker. When I saw this, I I kind of was taken aback and I was like. That's a really weird number for them to have. So their estimate is that if by the time of the having, now listen to the number, if by the time of the having next April, we have a $35,000 Bitcoin, that's when they expect that multiple to happen. They, needed, they, said, they, they said we need at least a $35,000 Bitcoin. The thing that struck me as odd is that if you've been paying attention the last 10 days within the cryptocurrency space, uh, based off of the DTCC or CTDD, ABCD website that listed the rumor, the rumor, the rumor of the BlackRock uh, Bitcoin ETF, Bitcoin went from 28,000 to 35,000 over the course of a couple of days. They were expecting us to hit $35,000 by next April. Now, what happens if Bitcoin has already hit that price? They said, assuming a price of $35,000 at the date of the halving, a $400,000 cycle top would break the trend of diminishing returns, a reasonable expectation due to the $2 billion halving shock supply, supply shock, and increasing scarcity of Bitcoin on exchanges. Something weird is is happening. I've been saying that for a long time. We've never had a situation like this in the cryptocurrency space. We've never seen this like solidification of Bitcoin and crypto as an asset class. A lot of these price predictions I mentioned before, I think, of course, Bitcoin is very undervalued for what it is. You cannot have a system that has not broken down that is immutable, that any one 8 billion people on the planet have access to, that is already transacting trillions of dollars. Imagine, so it's it's estimated that anywhere between 50 to one, anywhere, 50 to 100 million people are currently into Bitcoin. If you take the 50 million number, 50 million people on the planet when we have 8 billion people, what happens if the amount of people in Bitcoin goes from 50 million to 500 million or even to a billion people? Is Bitcoin then transacting $25 trillion per month? How much is a network like that worth? Something that's transacting trillions of dollars for everyone around the planet. Very interesting. And this is why I think we're seeing so many wealthy people get into it because I think they get it. I think they understand the actual value of all of this, but how they've been able to keep prices so low while 92% of it is now in the hands of uh, very lucky, wealthy individuals is completely beyond me. Um, as always, the article will be in the description below for you to read it yourself. I do hope that you have all enjoyed because something crazy is happening and I think something, I think we're all going to be shocked. I think we're all going to be very shocked by the value of a lot of coins during the next uh, bull run, having cycle, you know, that whole euphoric phase that we tend to go through because I think there's a lot of pent up uh, economic energy that's kind of going to get unleashed within this market. But this is also just a personal uh, idea, having been in the market for so long. I do hope that you've all enjoyed I do hope that you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.